Lewis's first argument, supportive of intelligent design, was the argument from natural beauty. From early on, Lewis's pessimistic view of nature as cruel and wasteful was balanced by the longings nature stirred within him. For Lewis, our experience of beauty in nature pointed to the reality of something beyond nature. Atoms dead could never thus stir the human heart of us, unless the beauty that we see, the veil of endless beauty, be. In Lewis's view, the longings provoked by earthly beauty could not be accounted for by a blind and mechanical universe. They required a transcendent cause outside of nature. This cause was not necessarily personal, but it did go beyond undirected matter and energy. As a consequence, it put intelligent design back on the table as one of the options for discussion. Lewis's second argument, supportive of intelligent design, was the argument from morality. It was really the moral law that got Lewis thinking about how the argument from undesign ultimately was unsatisfactory. Because if we really think that the universe is evil or, or that it's cruel, uh, where do we get that standard from? If the universe is just what it is, and it just is uh, put together because of blind matter and motion, it couldn't be anything else, then where do we get off expressing outrage at it? Uh, it's just the way it is. So if we really think that there is a moral right and wrong, as most people do, and we want to hold to that belief, we really have to come up with some explanation other than blind matter and motion. In fact, the moral law, Lewis thought, pointed towards the need for a transcendent cause for morality. And that transcendent cause for morality opens the door to considering intelligent design as the explanation for morality. Lewis's third argument, supportive of intelligent design, was the argument from reason. The argument from reason is just the argument that in a naturalistic worldview, reason isn't going to fit. Because in the last analysis, everybody's thoughts are going to be the result of non-rational causes. You're basically trying to say that human reasoning, the very kind of reasoning that produced the origin of species, that produced Einstein's theory of relativity, that adds, subtracts, divides numbers and so forth. What you're saying is all of that is ultimately the product of irrational causes, non-rational causes. That is an incoherent position, okay, because it says that somehow you can derive intelligence from that which is not intelligent. Lewis's fourth argument, supportive of intelligent design, was the argument from functional complexity. According to Lewis, modern science, especially Darwinian biology, has schooled us to think that crude and simple things in nature naturally develop into more complex and sophisticated things. The acorn turns into the oak tree. The egg turns into the owl. The human embryo turns into a full-fledged human being. What we really see in nature, according to Lewis, is simpler and less functional things habitually springing from things that are more complex and functional. If anything, it's a process of devolution, not evolution. Every acorn originally drops from a fully developed oak tree. Every owl's egg comes from a fully developed owl. Every human embryo requires two fully developed human parents. Lewis's argument from functional complexity is an explicit argument for intelligent design. Lewis's argument from functional complexity was based on his belief that an effect could not be greater than its original cause. Put another way, a copy could not be better than the original. This was a platonic idea that Lewis found in medieval writers, such as Bohethius. I think his most consistent argument was uh, the argument from the copy and the original. You see it in fiction, non-fiction, all over the place. And he argues there that if we consider the source of uh, an idea, it's not possible for the idea to contain more information than could be found in the sum of its causes. In an informal way, seems to have uh, anticipated some of the ideas of, uh, of Bill Dembski here because you know, Bill Dembski has, has published uh, many, many works that support the idea that um, you really can't get 
new information out of undirected causes. You have to go to some intelligent source 